Hey, hello, what's up, and welcome into this week's episode of the Geek Garage Podcast. I'm Ted, joined as always by David. Say hello, David. Hello, David. Oh, that's not right again. Ah, once again, I screwed this intro up. Hello, Ted. How are you doing? Never better. (laughs) Once again, you are so incredibly (laughs) proud to be a part of this fine, fine internet program, aren't you? Not the way I describe it, but uh, I don't want to, you know, everybody's having a tough time. I don't want to come down (laughs) too hard. Well, I appreciate that. No, yeah. I'm I'm doing fantastic, all things considered. I appreciate it. Good. Uh, this week, we are continuing on in our theme month of villains. I don't know why we picked April. Uh, I think it's April. Yes. Yes, uh, it is April. All right. I, uh, time is no longer linear. Yeah, if it yes. even... I, I personally have entered the Twilight Zone, so I don't know what day it is. I literally right. uh, looked down. David texted me yesterday uh on a thursday i didn't know what day it was i literally looked at my phone i was like how is it thursday already yesterday was tuesday what happened (laughs) yeah if it was linear to begin with it is uh no longer that uh and it's a goddamn miracle that i remember to put the trash out yesterday evening Uh, how how i remember to do that i is is anyone's guess uh but good yeah, for uh, me. my neighbors had theirs out so i just kind of was like you know what this is probably right we're gonna follow them. <laughs> <laughs> they seem like they have it together right there's strength in numbers yes uh like i said we're forging ahead with our second episode in our themed month for villains this time we're going to be covering television and movies mm-hmm. um if you did not listen to the last episode good job you're doing great <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as we discussed there, we'll give a brief recap here this month. We're just going over doing a few episodes about some of our favorite villains in fiction, um, from all different mediums. Last week we covered literature. This week will be television and movies. Next week will be comic books. And then to wrap it up at the end of the month, we will do a watch along for a movie, um, you know, with one of our favorite villains in it. Duh. That would make sense. Yes. I think. That is right. Yes, uh, that sounds correct. We're gonna go yes. with that. It's, it sounds it sounds good. We're gonna go with it. Yeah, um, fuck it. We'll do it live. Fuck it. We'll do it li- exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we also have on the website or soon to be on the website a running list of all the villains we've picked from each medium that will be gone over uh, yep. on each of these podcasts, where you can check it out and uh, learn a little bit more about that character or just go and say okay they talked about this one now i'm interested in that or, or what have right you. yeah mainly it just has a reference like right. a few a few listeners requested it and uh, i was like hey cool like listener interaction i love that and so i was pretty quick to throw that up there and so yeah i'll be i'll be updating it after every episode that we do so you can go back and reference all of our villain picks for each medium Awesome. Uh, Speaking of listener interaction, there is a Facebook poll currently going on on the Geek Garage. Uh, Is it a Facebook group now, David? Is that what it is? Yeah, it's the the new Facebook group. I think it's the Geek Garage official fan and listener group. Uh, that's that's the full title by the way the official geek garage fan listener group thing on facebook is right with all the verbal crutches and all yes the Uh, ums and the ellipsis are not implied they're literal all right they're there (laughs) because i am indeed a fucking moron but yes it is it is up if you still want to vote you can but uh, the the results that we will go off of uh, are the results that we have as of you know right now so so, yes. Yeah. So thank everybody who has voted uh, or will vote. Although the people who have not yet voted but will vote after hearing this, uh, you get a little bit less thanks. Sorry, that's just how it goes. <laughs> right. Thank you also to everybody else who reached out um, on so- on any of the social medias, particularly the Facebook group that has been going gangbusters, relatively speaking, for mm-hmm. voicing their uh, p- their picks and their opinions, as well as just saying hey, hello, what's up, all that good shit. Um, David said it; he hit the nail on the head. We really appreciate fan interaction. Otherwise, we're just two idiots talking to our ourselves and right. um while that's not a bad thing necessarily it does kind of get a little lonely so yep you know <laughs> uh, i'm sure romery quarantine is doing a number on me buddy i gotta be honest with you. <laughs> man you and me both yeah so um i think that about covers it david you got anything else you want to hit um i was going to go over the results of the poll but 
there's a tie-in with the the subject matter of the poll and one of my picks for the TV section. Well, so, that's, a, that's a tease. So we'll we'll wait, we'll wait yeah. on that. Yeah, we can do that. Uh, do we do we want to reiterate anything with the the updates on the events that we were supposed to attend? Yeah, that's the other thing I was just thinking about bringing up. So everything's uh, canceled. Yeah, pretty much everything. <laughs> there we go. Under canceled. So yeah. EvilCon was supposed to be a couple of weeks ago in March. That has been postponed. David, has it been rescheduled yet? Yeah, it's uh, uh, as of right now moved to July 10th and 12 uh, through 12th, but. You know, we'll see. Uh, yeah, still hopefully the, the world doesn't completely go to dog shit by then. And, uh, right. you know, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, really good meeting all the people to put on that con. And it was really nice of them to invite us to be a part of that and to do a panel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, hopefully that still goes down because it sounded yes. like a good time. Yeah. MTAC was supposed to be in mid-April. That has been postponed and, to my knowledge, not rescheduled yet. I think they're still yep. working on that, correct? Yep, still working on that. Still working on MomoCon, yep. Nashville, Nashville Comic Con has been pushed back the whole year. Yeah, uh, hopefully they, I don't have to pay them again. <laughs> uh, no, they they actually sent us an email. I can't remember if I told you that, but uh, since you, I guess that would have been helpful information for you. Yes, it would have been. It would have been. I wonderful. totally, I totally forgot. Like I was talking to Lindsay about it yesterday, and I was like, "Fuck!" Like Ted was the one who paid for that shit. Yes, Ted was, in fact. You know what? We'll we'll finish that off here. That's not a discussion anybody else needs to hear. <laughs> Don't worry, your money is safe. <laughs> That's the short story. Such as it um, is. Yeah, and uh, a KaiCon is, as of right now, still set for July 24th through the 26th. But yeah, like the so, others, we we will see. Yeah, again, hopefully uh, the world unfucks itself by then. And, <sighs> hopefully. Uh, and everything goes, maybe not back to normal exactly, but some nice facsimile thereof. Sure. And yeah. I think that about covers all the uh, the news bits we wanted to hit. So, yeah. um, David, do you have anything else? I think we're ready to get the show on the road. All right, we'll hit the music. Let's get this shit show on the road. All right, music right now. All right, Ted, you ready to uh, to kick this thing off with some television program villains? Some televillains? Yes, I am ready. Te- Ooh, I like that, televillains. Yeah, that one's free, yes. you can have that. All right, fair enough. I will use that, maybe in the episode description. That'll be cool. Uh, anyways, so yeah, my first villain is the gentleman known as Gus Fring from both Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. And this the first shout-out of tonight's goes to Charles C. H. from Facebook. She joined our Facebook group, uh, and she was the one who recommended this this villain. So thank you, Charles C. I was going to definitely pick him anyways. He was he made my short list like right away. But thank you, Charles C. for for uh, recommending him, and I appreciate your enthusiasm for this villain uh, as much as I do. Um, so yeah, like I said, Gus Fring from Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul. Uh, I like this dude because he is excellent at playing both sides of the coin when it comes to his facade of being a legit businessman and a notorious drug lord. Uh, his, uh, he's effective because his intimidation tactics are incredibly off the charts. Pretty legit. Uh, yeah, um, he did. can he can make you shit yourself just by like staring at you like in your face, and he like doesn't even cuss, like no swearing. Like I don't think I've ever heard him use a naughty word in in either show. He just like he strikes fear in the hearts of everyone just by like simply looking at you, and you're like, holy shit, okay, this mean this dude means business. Um, okay, yeah, he definitely has an aura of not to be fucked with. Yes. Uh, and uh, probably the thing that I, I like about him the most and why I think he is an effective villain, uh, I, I think a lot of people will agree with me, is he accepts the fact that it's in his blood to be, no pun intended, so cold-blooded and calculated and cruel. Like, he he, he doesn't he doesn't deny the fact that like he's the things that he does 
to to cover up the like you know he does both good and bad things you know he he donates like a lot of his money to charity like there's the whole part in breaking bad where he like pays for hanks um uh, isn't like a softball team or something uh no well i mean it's when the the two cousins that are unnamed that they're just known as the cousins that go after well they do have names but they go after hank and they like they cripple him and so like gus pays for his hospital stay oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. rehab right. Right. and so he he is like very charitable and does like other things and of course he has like his legit businesses like uh the the madrigal electromotive and then he has uh, of course a part of that is um is Poyos Hermanos. Uh, and that's all, uh, not all of it's a front for his, you know, drug laundering, um, um, you know, business or whatever. But like he, he accepts the fact that he, he has to play both parts and there's just a, a certain cruelty and evilness to to the way that he plays both sides of that coin um it's it's kind of hard to describe to uh if you've if you've never watched either show um i I just i suggest you you do that first but yeah it's he's just um a crazy dude uh and like ted said he has an aura of not to be fucked with so yeah um the best villain in breaking bad and should have been the last villain after he was gone this the show went just completely <clears throat> to me yeah we we had a, a discussion off air about this not too long ago a couple of weeks ago where we we talked about how we thought the show could have ended with spoiler alert his death yeah uh, so uh but yeah that's that's another discussion yes Yes, it is. Uh, I agree, though. That's a like I said, that's a great villain. Um, yeah, and a good one. Had the show not gone way down in quality after that, I probably would have picked him. But yeah, right. Sorry, sorry, buddy. You're getting graded on a curve. <laughs> um, my first villain from television is Marlo Stanfield from The Wire. Oh. Um, The Wire is one of the top two or three best shows that's ever been on television, and I will die on that hill. Um. It's available on HBO. It was an HBO show. It's available on HBO now. Is that what it's called, David? And now HBO now. Yeah, I, I don't think HBO Go is a thing anymore. Or whatever, whatever the HBO service is, um, which I just heard was free for like a month or two because of the COVID nineteen. So, um, not everything on there is free, but The Wire is one of the shows that's on there that you can stream without a membership. Right, because um, it's so old. Um, yeah, it is an older show. I think it. It's probably, I think it went from like 2001 to 2006 or something like that. Yeah. It um, kind of ran along the, uh, the Sopranos and six feet under. Yeah. 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 Part of that, uh, part of that era. Yeah. It is fantastic. Um, Marlo, I, there are so many good villains in the wire and, um, I, I pick Marlo kind of overall. I think Stringer Bell is, um, played by Idris Elba is, is the one that a lot of people point to because he's very charismatic. Um, and obviously because it's Idris Elba, um, mm-hmm. Avon Barksdale is also probably more charismatic. And then his hench person Snoop was much scarier than Marlo, but Marlo had all the best lines and the determination and ended up running the city as the kingpin at the end. Um, so that's why he wins out again. You're getting graded on a curve. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, like I said, he had some of the best lines in the whole show. Like, my name is my name, which is just fucking hard. Even without context, <laughs> that's badass. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. Um, just a great villain. Um, and kind of that same, that same aura that like Gus had of just not to be fucked with and just like 100% G. Right. Yeah. I, man, the wire has been on my watch list for a long time and I just, I haven't gotten around to checking it out yet, but you and like everyone else and their mother has uh, talked the show up so much. Like they, they have nothing but great things to say about it. So uh, yeah, um, maybe um, I'll, I'll start watching it this weekend. Fuck. It's on, like I said, it's on the HBO now or HBO go, whatever it is, uh, Mm -hmm. subscription service because it's an HBO show. It was also on Amazon prime for a hot minute. Um, Right. Like a prime available show. I don't know if it still is. Um, but it was, you can find the DVDs are pretty cheap. I bought the whole series, um, for like 50 bucks. Okay. So you can, you can find the DVDs for pretty cheap. Right. Yeah. That's pretty good. 
Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, so my next TV villain is Tammy Two from Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, that's pretty good. Yeah, second shout out of the night to my wonderful wife, Lindsay Warner Dassaw. She didn't hyphenate her last name, but uh, going back, if I had to do it over again, I would have insisted that she kept her last name because that's the kind of person I am. Pat myself on the back. Anyways, going right ahead. Uh, so I, I picked Tammy, too, from Parks and Rec because, one, I wanted to mix it up a little bit. I figured with villains, we'll probably get into some... Some of the heavier stuff, you know, it, just in, in general. But I, I, I figured picking a comedic villain, I guess, if you want to put it that way, would add a little bit of uh, brevity and lightheartedness to to the show. Uh, but um, I do also like her because she's t- <laughs> she fits our criteria pretty well. Yeah, like and, almost to a T. Like we right. planned it that way. We did not, but it, that's a good pull. Right. So... I'm going to assume that a lot of people that listen to our show are also familiar with Parks and Rec. If you're not, then you have been wasting your life. But Tammy, too, is Ron Swanson's second wife, and she has no true feelings for Ron. She only means to derail his life completely so that she may revel in that controlling feeling. So that's one reason why she is an effective villain. <clears throat> she also embodies that person or thing in a lot of people's lives that have the ability to like kick the door down and just fuck your whole shit up. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not singling out anyone in particular. I'm just saying like in gen general generality. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, just for everyone, everyone can relate to a situation where you're either a person, place or a thing, which is a noun. Um, you know, just comes into your life and is like, hey, you know how things are going great right now? Well, get ready for all that to fucking change. Uh, and uh, yeah, she just, she's just uh, not a good, not a good a uh, uh, person. Chaotic but, evil, for sure. Yes. Uh, sh- plus she, she wears a thong as distraction and, and then slaps her face with beef jerky uh, to try to get Ron all, all riled up. I mean, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it kind of does. What are we talking for... about? <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. I'm just thinking about beef jerky and boning all of a sudden. I, I don't know, but you know, maybe we should, maybe we should get back to the show. Warm in here suddenly. <laughs> Woo! Ted, what's your next pick? Suicide. I think at this point. <laughs> no, that was that was too dark. <laughs> I legit choked. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was... We got a little blue there for a second. <laughs> uh, uh, oh shit! Okay, <clears throat> uh, sorry. All right. Uh, my second pick is the cigarette smoking man from the X Files. Ah, oh, the smoking man. Yes. yes, the smoking man is in this one. Uh, that was a line from a bare naked ladies song. Way back in the 90s. Yes. Uh, Anyways, continuing on. Yes, that was in fact a Bare Naked Ladies reference on this podcast (laughs) in the year of our Lord 2020. (laughs) Yes, I'm I'm sorry, everyone. (sighs) Next week, it will have been one week since you heard that joke. That's a second Bare Naked Ladies reference. Ah, I see what you did there yet, Spin. All right. Uh, anyway, yeah. So this the uh, cancer man, the cigarette smoking man, whatever you want to call him. Sure. Um, basically, just the dickiest dick <laughs> that ever dicked. Indeed. Yeah. He shot JFK. He did a whole bunch of other evil shit with the CIA. There's some aliens in there. Spoiler alert, which we should have done at the top of the episode. And we're going to do now. Um, and we've been calling it as we go. Yeah. Well, none of this matters. <clears throat> Nobody's listening to this. No. <laughs> Uh, he sucks, basically. Great character. Shitty, 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 shitty. <laughs> Everything that's wrong with the world is basically this guy's fault. <laughs> hey, Ted, is he shitty? Yes. Okay, cool. Was I not clear? I could be clearer. <laughs> <laughs> he actually made a reappearance in the, the new run of the X-Files. I can't remember if that was a continuation or like a, a reset. Yeah, I thought it was supposed but... to be like a continuation. <clears throat> uh, I think I think so, too. Uh, but yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I remember watching it 
couple years ago a year or two whenever the new episode started airing and i was like oh hey it's the smoky man that guy's evil yeah hence you him being on your list so go us yes indeed go us (laughs) yes we're doing let's try and salvage this david what's your next one (laughs) <laughs> All right, so this is the tie-in slash tie-back slash callback to our poll mention, Facebook poll, in the in the cold open, pre-roll, whatever you want to call it, uh, before we started the intro music. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I did a Facebook poll, uh, well, as of uh, this recording, it was yesterday, but uh, when this record, uh, when this episode comes out, I guess it'll be about a week. Time is relevant, especially right now. Uh, but it was who was the better bad guy in Game of Thrones, and you had two options, <clears throat> and it was either A. Joffrey Joffrey Baratheon or B. Ramsay Bolton, and an overwhelming majority decided that Ramsay Bolton correctly was the better bad guy Uh, i actually had to go back and clarify with a couple people and uh, i I try to edit the facebook poll post to to clarify what i meant by better better bad guy because like i said a lot of people asked like hey like what do you mean by better bad guy as in like the character was was like not not as bad as the other or he was pure evil or so i had to like clarify anyways uh but yeah like i said the uh, the overwhelming majority said that ramsey bolton he won like 18 to 2 or 18 to 3 something very overwhelming so uh once again thank you to everyone that participated participated in that poll we really really appreciate the engagement um but yeah i picked ramsey bolton for my list of uh of villains for tv shows because i have never been more excited to see anyone on tv or film get eaten by dogs um this guy is the scum of the earth was the scum of the earth uh the most giant piece of shit that i ever laid eyes on in uh, tv history uh and he was an effective villain because uh point one he cut off theon Greyjoy's junk and then continued to torture him afterwards nicknaming him reek actually that wasn't even a nickname like he legally changed his name to reek uh and and just called him that uh and then second point he forced sansa stark to marry him and then raped her on multiple occasions making uh theon Greyjoy slash reek watch in the corner which is not only morally wrong and repugnant but fucking creepy Uh, apparently in the book uh he makes him join in which is even more wrong but you know we're talking strictly about the uh the tv show uh and then he kills rickon stark uh in one of like the cruelest ways possible like he makes him run to his family and then shoots an arrow at him in the back so that was cool and he was only a kid so fuck this guy yeah uh basically what i'm getting out of this is that he's king of the dick move he is he really is king of the dick move like nothing that this guy ever did could be considered redeemable in any form or fashion like you know there's there's an occasional villain where they occasionally do something semi-redeemable where you're like oh maybe he's like bordering on the anti-villain status like nope this guy was pure fucking evil scum of the earth the the uh the dead skin off my ball sack and um i'm i was glad to see him get eaten by a pack of wolves so fuck that guy you gotta get some lotion man it's all this <laughs> uh i don't actually i i don't have a third one that i'm com- i'm confident in and the reason for that is because i went back and forth on this and based on our definition i don't know that i can fairly classify this as a villain mm-hmm but they're so badass, I'm going to put him in here anyway. <laughs> All right, do it. I don't give a shit. Uh, and that's the Borg from Star Trek. Okay. Yeah. As we talked about on our Star Trek episode, I fucking love the Borg. Um, I do not care how ridiculous they got as the series and the other series <laughs> after that went on. Um, the Borg from The Next Generation were fucking straight up horrifying. <laughs> um, 
which is awesome. But again, you know, we are narrowing down our lists to say that they have to be actively, anybody we pick has to be actively engaged in doing villainous things. And the Borg were just like, you know, trying to assimilate. Not right. in an evil way. Just, you know. <laughs> there, there was no evil assimilation? Yeah, I'm not, okay, look, I'm not saying, I'm not saying what they did was right. Okay, sure. Sure. I'm just saying. All right, I'm just saying. <laughs> I uh, I would love to like jump in here and be like, yeah, like give you like either some counterpoints or like, yeah, what you're saying is correct, but I didn't get that far. You said this was from the the next generation, right? Yes, uh, they debuted in the next generation, and um, then they went on. They were in um, some of the films as well as. Um, they had recurring appearances in some of the later series, like uh, Deep Space Nine. Okay. Um, and then I think they were in the most recent Picard series as well, but I haven't I haven't had a chance to watch that yet. Right on. Uh, I heard nothing but great things. I think it it just wrapped up as of this yeah, week. Yeah, first or last season week. just wrapped up uh, last yeah. week, I think. Yeah, and I heard nothing but fantastic things about it. So uh, good for that show. <clears throat> um, but yeah, uh, shall we transition to film? Yes. Cool. Uh, so, my first pick for film is Mr. One, Jason motherfucking Voorhees. From the Friday the 13th franchise, if you weren't familiar. And if you weren't, then I'm so sad for you. Uh, but I picked him because... I honestly think he's fucking hilarious. Uh, like, that's, that's not a good reason to, like pick someone as a villain but like i i think he's funnier than tammy too like he just keeps coming back to life like inexplicably and uh like you just you can't kill this dude he's come back to life like 10 to 15 times and uh like no matter how many times you like strap a giant ass boulder to his leg and try and drown him in the lake like he's like "Uh uh-uh bitch and uh like just comes up for the next movie, he's like, we got to make more money. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <laughs> and so he, he just, Friday the 13th, on... the producers spent all their money on blow. <laughs> <laughs> they fucked up the next mortal Kombat movie and we got to make that money back. Um, but, uh, but yeah, he, like he can kill you in a thousand different ways, uh, a- as per the movies. And like 900 of those ways are with the machete. Um, and of course, like Ted said, there's the almighty, all classic line in Jason goes to space or Jason, Jason X. in space, Jason X, uh, where the dude goes, it's okay, everyone. He just wanted, wanted his machete back. Yes. Uh, that's the greatest line ever written for any movie ever. And I will not hear a word <laughs> to the otherwise. Right. <clears throat> and that was spoken just seconds before that dude took that machete to the face or body or Died like something. A champ. Yeah. He, uh, he went out, um, well, not swinging. I mean, Jason got him, uh, with this. Okay. Fuck it. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I had to throw in a, a horror, an actual horror villain. And it was actually like, when you think of like evil villain or evil or villain, like, you know, you, you kind of automatically go to horror movies and like suspense and sci-fi, but I act, Ted, I don't know if you had this issue, but I had a hard time finding villains from, from the horror genre that fit the criteria. Yeah. Trying to, trying to make the criteria fit. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, a lot of horror villains are, like you said, pretty wrapped into like the occult or you right. know, evil spears, something like that. Yeah. You know, in some of my favorite horror movies, the quote unquote villain isn't really a villain, like the xenomorph from Alien. Like mm-hmm. that right. that's not a villain. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, they're the antagonist for sure, but they're I wouldn't I wouldn't consider them a villain. Yeah. Um same with like the thing. Um that's right. one of my all time favorite movies and I love that creature, but that's not really a villain. It's just a, a an organism trying to survive, you know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, you could, you could make a case for some of like the mass killers from the slasher films. Like I think Michael Myers is definitely a villain and right. he made my short list, but ultimately <clears throat> I did not have him on there. 
Um, Jason, like you said, I think a case could be made. Freddy Krueger, although maybe that's more like revenge. It's kind of depends on what iteration you go with on that, I guess. But right. Yeah. I mean, I think you could, there's several really notable ones you could pick, but I I think that overall you're probably right. A lot of those characters are more mired in, you know, things that aren't necessarily them actively choosing villainy. Sure. Yeah. But anyways, that was just a, a a little aside that uh, I noticed with, uh, with horror and suspense in particular, uh, when when picking villains for movies but anyways go go ahead with your your first film movie pick all right uh my first one is going to be a little um probably surprising uh, i'm really proud of this pull um and that is lord humongous from mad max 2 the road warrior <laughs> okay um any character who can be called the ayatollah of rock and roll automatically is on any list i will ever put together <laughs> <laughs> um I love Mad Max, all the the four Mad Max movies that have been out, um, and the hopeful fifth one that is supposedly being worked on. Um, Hopefully. And while I think Fury Road is probably the best movie of them all, the best villain by far is Humongous. Um, He's just insane. He's like 30 feet tall. He wears like this weird S&M gear and like a cod piece and a fucking mask. (laughs) He's got this ridiculous revolver. Um the great catchphrases and nicknames, like I said, um, just, it's just badass. Um, and you know, plus it's Mad Max. I mean, fuck, you know, right. <laughs> what do you want? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mad Max enough said, uh, when he rolls up, when humongous rolls up to the camp for the first time with his, you know, vagabond outlaw posse. And he's just like, I'm a kind man, you know, I'll share with you. And, and you're just like, nah, dog, that's bullshit. That is a hundred percent bullshit. <laughs> um from then on it's just like it's just a great character right yeah yeah for sure i uh i actually i don't think i have seen mad max uh two yet you said he was from two right yeah the road right. warrior which is part two <clears throat> yeah i i need to go back and and rewatch the old ones uh the originals i've seen like the original like the the first mad max but um I, I kind of meant when I first saw that, I, I meant to just kind of keep the ball rolling and watch the others, but um, yeah, uh, eventually I'll get there. But um, for now I shall stay lazy. So fair. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but anyways, um, my next film villain is Mr. Darth Vader. I think Mr. Is his preferred uh, uh, title um, before Darth and Vader. Uh, but yes, I, I, ca- I had to put him on here because did you though? I did actually. I'm going to, I'm going to dispute this because he redeems himself at the end. So is he really a villain? That's why I chose him as, as an effective villain like that. Uh, so. Although this... I must say he did also order the destruction of a complete planet. So I don't know that throwing one dude down a space well kind of makes up for that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so you just kind of like refuted your own hypotheses. So, good job. Yes, I'm aware of that, David. Thank you. <laughs> uh, anyways, so so yeah, I I guess I didn't have to pick Darth Vader, but like I wanted to have at least like one like everyone fucking knows who this guy is, and I mean that's not the the main reason I picked him, but you know, he is a villain that is like literally transcended generations and has been like this huge pop culture icon, but like he was, he is effective because he was able to leverage that like classic villain trait of inspiring empathy from the audience. Like ultimately at the end, like like you said, yes, he did blow up like entire planets with this floating space station. Uh, if you want to get technical about it. Um, and like physically he fits the role pretty perfectly. Like dresses in all black. Goth as fuck. He, he, his suit is all black except for like red and green and white buttons on his like chest panel that, not really sure what that does. I'm, I think those are lights. I'm assuming that it has something to do with keeping the fucking dude alive and out of pain because like he got 
eaten to death by, or not to death, but like, you know. He done got fucked up by Obi-Wan and some lava. Right, yeah. He had the high ground. uh, So if if you missed that. um, And then, you know, he just murked that bitch. And, uh, but yeah, anyways, back to his black suit. Um, His suit is black and he's got a funny helmet. Um, And he uses the force and we all know that the force can be used for good and bad. And he actively chooses to use it for bad. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, like, uh, like humans in the real world, we, we all have a choice to pursue good and bad. And, uh, and yeah, he, he chose to go to the dark side and, uh, yeah, we, we, we all we're, I don't, I don't really have to discuss this too much. We, we all know what happens in Star Wars. We all know that Darth Vader is technically the bad guy or the antagonist. And yes, he does, you know, fucking throw the Emperor over the, the fucking railing at the end. And of course, he comes back um, for some unknown reason. But Money. Yes. <laughs> Yes, that I is, think it's funny that there are nine movies and only, and nothing happens. And like all the things that are happening in the whole universe turns like six people. Nine fucking <laughs> movies of this. Only six people in the whole universe matter. <laughs> hey, uh, and four of them are fucking related to one another. So anyway, you know what? Woo, I'm gonna get off that soapbox and let you have this one. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, I'll just remember not to invite you for the next like Disney or Star Wars or Marvel. Uh, movie related episode thank you that's all i've ever asked for (laughs) merry christmas yes what's what's your next movie pick uh i'm gonna keep this real simple real obvious but uh hannibal lecter from silence of the lambs (laughs) on my notes i literally just wrote duh (laughs) (laughs) fair enough yeah i am you know uh i think Anthony Hopkins is in this movie for like 15 minutes, I think. And one of really is that all? Yeah. And he won like the supporting, uh, supporting actor Oscar. Oh my God. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. Um, he is, or no lead, maybe it was lead. Cause they swept the, I think it was the last movie to get the big five categories. So yeah, lead actor. I'm I'm fairly certain, but anyway, uh, yeah, he, uh, he dominated. This is one of the best villain performances of all time. And it's just a great villain character. We talked about on the fiction episode how there was probably a good chance that some of the picks that we made for that were also going to be famous uh, or pretty famous movie characters. And, you know, this is the reverse of that, where this is a very famous movie character that was started out as a very famous book character. And while The Silence of the Lambs is a great book and he's great in the book, um, Anthony Hopkins just really brings that character to life in a new and terrifying way. So, right. Um, yeah, the, uh, the meetings with Clarice, the way he talks a dude into swallowing his own tongue um he literally cuts a guy's face off and then crucifies him um <laughs> classic no, he, he he earns he earns this this spot on the list <clears throat> i i think it's safe to say that he does yeah yeah all right so my next movie pick is and ted i this is another one that you're going to be happy with he said with heavy sarcasm uh i and this pick is howard howe which is played by the late and great Michael Parks from the movie Tusk. Um, I I picked him because he is almost a likable and endearing character. Almost. Um, except uh, he's really fucking weird and really fucking creepy and a super effective villain because he wants to lure people into his super creepy house in the hills and turn them into walruses. Because he has an affinity for walruses and being friends with walruses. I believe the plural is walri. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if that's true. I just wanted to say that. Um, now I really want to Google that. I don't. I don't think that's right. I'm googling uh, it. You keep talking. I will. I will get to the bottom of this. You do that. We need. Uh, I. I doubt highly that there's a damn. It's the misconstrued plural form. Of, everything's fucking bullshit. I'm done with this <laughs> universe. Wow the 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 lack of knowledge of the pluralness of walrus uh, has uh, really like fucked up your evening, hasn't it? Garbage bullshit. 
All right. Well, you know, back to the the matter at hand here. Uh, he, you know, his his master plan to lure an individual to his house is like kind of I wouldn't say ingenious, but it's it's at least humorous. Like you know, putting a well thought out and crafted note up above a urinal in a bar in Canada that's saying like, I've lived a long and very characteristic life. And I just want someone to share it with. And just along being the dude that he is, of course, it's his character decides to go, uh, go interview this guy for his podcast. And, um, he uh he he definitely does hear parts of his story including the one where he is like stranded on an island and befriends a walrus uh but then like he uh, Justin Long's character then gets drugged and um, then he's wheelchair bound cuz he can't move any of his body parts and then he gets turned into a fucking walrus like a, like a one man version of a human centipede except walrus and there's no other people involved. So, so nothing at all like the human. Yes, actually it's, it's nothing like the human centipede. Um, and just as a side note, uh, Michael parks, uh, he played the shit out of this role. Uh, it for a second, this movie, I felt like turned into almost like a Tarantino film with uh, with it being so dialogue driven in certain points uh, i mean that's that's kevin smith's like mo in a lot of his movies anyways but it, it, it parts of it felt very uh tarantino-esque including you know conversations between uh michael park's character howard how howard how and justin long's character uh but yeah, I just wanted to kind of throw that little side note out there before we move on. So, Ted, I, I know I know Tusk wasn't really a, a favorite of yours at all from Kevin Smith's uh, discography or not discography, filmography. filmography. Uh, no, in, in fact, I forgot the movie existed. So uh, <laughs> good, good. I mean, you know, it's your list. If, if you think it's a good pick, then it's a good pick. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right. Um, it's fitting, I guess, that you mentioned Tarantino because my next villain is a Tarantino creation. Oh. And that is uh, Colonel Hans Landa from Inglorious Bastards. Nice, Paul. Um, great villain. And um, one of the ways that I measure how successful a villain is, and not just me, I mean, a lot of people do this. I think you mentioned, mentioned it earlier, just how happy you are when they get their comeuppance. Mm-hmm. And at the end of this movie, spoiler alert, when he gets that swastika carved into his head, that might be the most fun I've ever had watching a movie. <laughs> it is uh, it is indeed a well-earned comeuppance. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so great because he is such a fantastic character, just so terrifying. Mm-hmm. Um, the switch in the beginning, in the, in, in, you know, in the opening scene where he's talking to um, the French, he's in the French family's home, and he's talking to the man, and he just goes from being like jovial and friendly and and charismatic and all this to where he's just like you're hiding motherfuckers here aren't you i was like oh oh shit just got really real you know yeah um it's great and just his presence of you know he thinks he's this worldly um you know cultured person but really he's like a fucking monster you know it's, mm. it's just a fantastic character and a great performance obviously um by christoph waltz on top of that yeah i i actually kind of mentally went through tarantino's works with of course, him being a shared favorite between us. And like, I have one that is on my honorable mentions, but for some reason, I I, I guess I was high that day and I just didn't really think of uh, Hans Landa, but that is a fucking great pick. I, yeah, excellent, I, excellent I, film. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably, probably my most rewatched Tarantino movie. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just something I, about watching Hitler get shoot in the face, you know, <laughs> just makes me feel good. I'm always down. I am very, I've said this on the podcast before and I'll say it again. I am very pro Nazis getting killed in movies. Yes. I'm very pro. Very right. Pro that. Yeah. But him and like Goebbels and like a bunch of other fuckheads got gunned down in that scene. And it was fucking fantastic. It was very cathartic. Yeah. Yes. 
quite nice. Uh, but yeah, uh, my uh, my last pick uh, is uh, it's it's kind of a, another one that's just out there, and I literally thought of it like just randomly, like. I was like, holy shit, like, I can't believe I didn't think of this person, and Ted, he might get a kick out of it, maybe not, I don't know. Um, but uh, it is Cruella de Vil from the original 101 Dalmatians. That's a, uh, that's a good one. Yeah, voiced by Betty Lou Gerson, and uh, I, I wanted to throw this one in there because uh, it's, uh, I think it's our only cartoon uh, thus far that, uh, or sorry, I shouldn't say cartoon, um, animated film or series that that we have on our pick pick list um but i'll keep it short and simple uh, she was an effective villain because she literally wanted to kill 101 puppies for a fucking fur coat fuck that bitch yeah that's a that's maybe the most evil thing you could possibly do as a, <laughs> like... yes except blow up and blow up an entire planet but uh yeah um yeah no fuck her um she wanted to kill a bunch of puppies for a garment. Um, she can uh, she can get ran the fuck over by that weird convertible that she drove around in. That so, is also true. Yeah. Um, well, now my last villain, who I thought was the most evil, is going to pale in comparison to that hideous myth, <laughs> and uh, that is Anton Chigurh from No Country for Old Men. Uh, I don't think that pales in comparison. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't remember Anton Chigurh killing any dogs, but... Uh, he sure as fuck everything as else though he, he had a good hand in. <laughs> um, one of my favorite pieces of movie trivia is um, that they uh, somebody hired a bunch of psychologists to go over you know different movie villains and um, characters that were supposed to be quote unquote crazy in films to see which was an accurate portrayal and they all agreed that Anton Chigurh was the most accurate portrayal of sociopathy um, <laughs> which makes it even scarier in my opinion <laughs> Yeah, that that's pretty pretty terrifying. I I did not know that. Where where did you learn about that? Uh, on the internet. Oh, okay. So it must be true. Yes. Uh, obviously. <laughs> so I wasn't would... I wasn't trying to to refute that. I, I just uh, I was curious if you like learned it on the uh, the DVD commentary or something or. No, I've seen that in several different places. I can't remember where I saw it originally, but it's popped up a few different places on different like movie sites I've been on. So gotcha. Uh, I'm gonna say that there's either I'm gonna I'm gonna err on the side of stupidity and say that that's uh, probably true. <laughs> I sure. have no idea if it is, but it, it sounds cool. So we're gonna go with it's true. I hope. Yeah, I, I mean want to believe. Right. I mean, clinically, that that makes sense. Like he he seems like a uh, complete fucking sociopath. So. Just the the dead eyed, remorseless, and inhuman way he goes about everything from mm -hmm. the coin toss, where he's just like, you know, call it what's the most you ever lost on a coin toss. Um when uh when somebody calls him on the phone and they ask if somebody's there and he's just like, Not in the way you mean. <laughs> just fuck it. That's that's like that's so unsettling. It's just mm -hmm. like the the nonchalance he has about having just killed this person. He's just like, not in the way you mean. And then he just moves his boot back. So it doesn't get blown on it. That's just, it's, I don't know. It's terrifying. Right. Um, and then one of my favorite lines in, in any movie ever is where he says, if, um, if your rules are what brought you here of what use was the rule. I was like, Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, which makes him even scary because he does have some kind of twisted internal logic. to where all these things make sense to him, which is even scarier. You know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Um, but uh, great villain, great film. Um, shouldn't have won the Oscar. There will be blood was robbed, but, uh, you know, so it goes. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. One of those things, but yeah, that's, that's a excellent pick. Uh, one of my favorite movie villains. And I feel like I thought about this guy, but I, I think I, at the time didn't put him on my list because for some reason I thought we were shying away from, uh, movies that were originally books. I don't know why, uh, I think we might have discussed that at one point in time, but I guess we eventually decided against it, and I just uh, didn't really think too hard about it or didn't ask. But yeah, um, great pick nonetheless. So, yeah. Do you have any uh, your your best of the rest? Some honorable mentions you want to throw out? Yeah. Uh, so for TV, I have the Mind Flayer from Stranger Things. Uh, 
you know, it, depending how philosophical you want to get with it, you could make a argument for or against it fitting our criteria for being a villain. Um, I mean, it is kind of like a thing that is just doing its thing. But on the other end, it uh, it does like does murk a lot of people. So so there's that, and then it like takes people. Um, it's it's kind of like the thing, but like not. It doesn't take up the form of other. Uh, like it doesn't leave one host and go to another. It just keeps on absorbing people and becomes like this even bigger thing. And uh, yeah, it's just bad news for everyone um and then my other tv honorable mention pick was the trinity killer from dexter um this guy was fucking crazy and evil um a ted i don't i don't know if you ever watched dexter or not but uh, i watched the first season and i was like how how did this how was this a phenomenon and i never picked it back <laughs> up again i was just like this is so dumb <laughs> Yeah, I do remember the show being a bit polarizing in that sense. Like some people like really loved it and others were like, they just, they didn't get it. Um, and uh, it definitely was one of those shows that fell off the rails towards the end. Like it was, it was pretty strong up until its last like couple of seasons. And then all of a sudden it took a huge fucking nosedive, especially at the end. They, everyone will agree that they botched the, uh, they botched the ending. Um, they they really bungled it. They they fucked it up. Fucked it up bad. And uh, no one was happy. But that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, and uh, I don't... I didn't really have uh, a whole lot of honorable mentions in the way of movies. Uh, I kind of wanted to, to pick Thanos. But, you know, I, I wanted to shy away from comic book villains. Um, just because I wanted to, that was a good decision because the comic book Thanos is way better. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, um, that's, uh, oh, uh, and, uh, T 1000 from Terminator Two: judgment day. Yes. That's a good pick. Yes. Made my uh, short, didn't quite make my short list, but was, was on the, you know, he was on the list I compiled originally and right. uh, unfortunately I get rid of him, but that's a great pull. Right. Um, I, uh, one that, uh, is on my honorable mentions list, kind of similar to our previous episode with fiction where it doesn't fit the criteria because it is, uh, not one person. Um, it's the deadly Viper assassination squad from Kill Bill one and two. I didn't think that any one particular of these, uh, these antagonists or villains were good enough to stand on their own. Ted, you and I were talking off air a couple days ago, talking about how Omar and Ishii was probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest of the villains. And, um, <clears throat> but you know, one, like I said, I, I thought that um, just all of them together kind of put together a pretty badass villain gang. And uh, yeah. Um, Anyways, Ted, what's uh, what are some of your honorable mentions? So I could have had like forty of these. Um, <laughs> I, I had a tough time. I had a way tougher time with this list than I did with the fiction list or with the comic book list. Either one, the literature list or the comic book list. Either one, I should say. Yeah. Um, that's because I'm a movie geek, so I really sure. was like, at him, at her, at them, at that, <laughs> at that. And then I was like, whoa, you got four hundred names. You got to chill. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I did narrow it down to like five honorable mentions um okay the first is going to be jack torrance from the shining um i feel like this one is just getting in under the wire in terms of our definition of a villain mm -hmm. yeah um i will die on the hill that kubrick's the shining is better than king's the shining I know that's mm -hmm. a very divisive opinion. A lot of people side with King and think the novel is better, but those people are wrong. Um, <laughs> Torrance in the film is a much better character. He's a much more interesting character because he's not just some goody two shoes that gets um, corrupted by uh, a haunted hotel, which is a really poor stand in for Stephen King going from being a, probably a good guy to a raging coke fueled alcoholic. Um <laughs> It's uh, it's a much more interesting interpretation where he's basically already a fucking disaster, and it's just one little thing that pushes him, um, you know, over the edge, or I guess one big thing in the sense of isolation. But right, the uh, the flip of that 
uh, with uh, his character in the book, I've heard <clears throat> been made into a, an argument more often, actually, of him being uh, a, a better character and a better villain because he started out good and and then turns, you know, turn evil. But, you know, to each his own. Yeah, like I said, those people are wrong and, and dumb. Um, next, I, I, I didn't see that was I didn't say that was me. Uh, <laughs> of course, I can't read, so I haven't read The Shining. You're worse. Um, but I I have watched The Shining, and I was uh, this actually was on my honorable mentions, but I think it came up in conversation off air that this was going to be on your honorable mentions, so I wasn't going to mention it. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, next, I have uh, Mad Dog, and there are two different Mad Dogs. The first from Hard Boiled, which anybody who's listening to me talk about movies knows that Hard Boiled is one of my favorite movies of all time, and Mad Dog is one of my favorite villains of all time in that movie. Uh, he's just the ultimate badass, uh, you know, gangster henchman, basically. Although I'm kind of cheating a little bit because at one point he does stop a gunfight so that some innocent hospital people can go by safely. And then he does also get killed because he doesn't want to see them get hurt. So, uh, but other, up until then, he's basically the most OG motherfucker in the movie. And then second is mad dog from the raid redemption, who is, um, a fucking martial arts badass and takes on two dudes and just fucking dominates them. Yeah. Yeah. He's, uh, he owns, he does. In fact, does in fact yeah uh two more really quick i have the wicked witch of the west from um wizard of oz that's probably wow, a really pick yeah that's but, a very um, surprising pick i would never have pegged you for putting something like the wizard of oz on your list but but who uh knows? i mean wicked is literally in her name um <laughs> she also has flying monkey demons and wants to murder a small kansas girl so uh Pretty <laughs> shitty villain. Uh, oh, well, good villain. Shitty. Yes. Yeah. Shitty you know person. I mean. Yeah. She sucks. She's uh, also green. And like green is the color that we most associate with evil other than black and red. Uh, so, top three, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, imagine a villain that's green and red and black. Like, I mean, we basically just described like Santa Claus uh, minus like. Well, I guess he has black shoes, so fuck it. Santa Claus is evil. Okay. I don't... <laughs> I'm going to have to let that one marinate for a little while, I think. I don't... Anyway, uh, and then my last one. Um, man from Bambi. <laughs> man? <laughs> and that's all I'll say. Well, I seem to have killed David, so that's our show, ladies and germs. Uh, tune back in next week where we will be going over comic books. As always, you can find us on the interwebs, on various social media <laughs> sites, and of course on geekgaragepodcast.com. Come say what's up. Send us a link on the Twitter, on Facebook, <clears throat> or just an old-fashioned comment on the blog. The uh, Facebook group does have some active polls going on, or at least an active poll going on. Mm-hmm. Um, so check that out. Give us. I'll a be shout. adding. Yeah, I'll be adding more here in the next couple of days. Uh, gearing up for the comic book episode. So yes. Uh, yeah, be on the lookout for that. Yes, uh, comic book episode will be up next, and then we'll do a watch along when David and I finally get our shit together and decide what movie we're going to pick for that. Um, yes. There'll be some information about that coming out on all the different social media sites when we have that. So be on the lookout yeah. for that. Awesome, David. Do you have yep. anything else you want to hit? <clears throat> um, I think that's it. Uh, we uh, we did all of our uh, all of our picks, uh, all yeah. the the dastardly bad guys and the and all that. So so fuck it, yeah. Let's uh, let's sign off this bitch. Another successful iteration of the Geek Garage podcast. That, I, I I should say that's certainly one way to describe it. Um, it's not the accurate way to describe it. Stay safe in these weird, crazy, strange times and uh, do the cheesecake thing. I don't know yeah. what it is. I don't know the words. It is be kind, stay geeky, and eat lots of cheesecake. Yeah, sure, do that. Yeah, do that. So, bye? Yes, bye. Okay, adios. <laughs> <laughs>